All right, so we got a new beta today. Importantly, it is a beta, it's not a normal update. So you do need to go into your library, to the game, to the properties, go to betas, and go select it at the bottom of the list. Now, it's mostly quality of life stuff. It is good, it's a bigger update than we've got for a little while now. Some good quality of life stuff. I don't think that this is gonna change how people play the game. Uh, it doesn't exactly add content to the game either. I know some people will probably get uppity about that, but oh no, they added this, but you know, I, I, will, I will tell you why I don't consider it content. Let's see. Let's see here. Now, there's a lot of fixes. Fixed crash. Oh, I like this. I like seeing that it's a very long list. I'm not gonna read all of them. Probably, I haven't even encountered more than one or two of these. But, it's nice just to see a big list of crash fixes. That's good. Save and load. That's always good. Maybe we've had these problems. I'm not sure. Let's see. Art added some stuff. Added new Kuzate heavy armor. Well, we'll have to see if it's nice and heavy. I, mean, I don't know that they need more heavy armor, but we'll make use of it. We'll make use of it if we can. Let's see, no well, achievement fixes. Okay, I don't care about that. Have to play on campaign mode without any mods. Who wants to play without any mods? Not me. Let's see. So, and got some sorting changes here. That's good. We'll have to we'll have to mess around with it and see. We'll have to if this is actually an advantage or not. But anything is good. Let's see. Implemented the fog of war. So you won't be able to look at their full information in the encyclopedia. You have to meet them first. I mean, like I said, this isn't gonna change how you play the game. It's just a little nuance. Added some tutorials. Well, that's we'll have to check them out. We'll have to actually look at the tutorials and see how they're good. It's good that they're adding more stuff like that because there's so many little basic things that people constantly have to ask about online that they just don't know. The game doesn't tell you that. Let's see. Oh, good. So it will. This here is good. Add a tool tip to disable leave kingdom button in the kingdom screen while in an army. That's good. This confuses people. They don't know why they can't leave the kingdom. It's good that it will, assumedly it will pop up and tell them that you need to disband your army. Let's see. You can rotate the character now. Okay. Bug fixes. Battles and sieges. See, there's always a lot of, you know, oh, we changed this, changed that in the siege. But then you do the siege and it's like, the same monkey business as any other siege for the last two years. So we, we have to just do sieges and see. We'll have to do and, and see if we notice. Manage, you know, are, are the units behaving better? Does the, do they follow your commands? Does the overall flow of the siege, you know, feel smoother and more engaging? Not just guys kind of like bonking each other and then suddenly someone's stuck in a wall. The end. Let's see. Well, they fix some stuff. Okay. I like seeing... I'll say this. I like seeing that it's a long list of fixes. Even if we'll have to get in and actually do some sieges to see if we notice an overall improvement at all. Because sometimes they change stuff and it just... It, you can't, you don't notice it because the same basic siege problems are still in the game. A character development. Added a new settlement near Lakata named The Retreat in which the player can approach a new NPC, the Hermit, and decide to retire from their current campaign, either moving on with one of their heirs or concluding their journey completely. This is good. This is something people really wanted. This is something we've suggested on the forum is, you know, rather than having this awkward wait for your character to die of old age so that you can take over as your child, could you just maybe choose to switch to your child? 
so now you can so that's part that's cool we're gonna we'll have to try it out but that's a good addition i would also like to see though something like a time skip where like say you have your kid but your kid isn't an adult yet it'd be great if you could choose to retire and then just have a time skip until you know they were an adult just for fun let's see a new window where players can see in progress okay so you can see a bunch of stats that's good people wanted that it wasn't warband it might as well be in bannerlord too let's see now oh, here here's here's one just for me change the descriptions of the partners in crime part as it could be misleading we'll have to see what they changed it to now i made a video about this uh, I reported this as a bug. Partners in Crime previously, assuming they changed it now, it says that bandit parties always surrender to you. Now, they don't always surrender to you. You need greater power than them or they still attack you, which it ma makes the perk not very useful because if you have more power than the bandits, they will very often surrender to you anyways and offer to join you. So... It's an okay perk, but if they would just always surrender to you and offer to join you, that would be much better. But it looks like in, like they they opted to just change the description rather than actually making it have bandits always surrender and offer to join you. And I mean, it's a 150 skill perk, so it's not nothing because roguery isn't like passively upgraded. You have to do a bunch of dumb stuff to get roguery. 150 roguery, you know, it doesn't happen by accident. Let's see. Perk overall. Perk overhaul. Perk overalls. All perk descriptions have been rewritten to improve clarity. That's good. That's something, you know, a lot of people have wanted. It's just, you know, there's so many inconsistent terms in the perks. It'd be great if, you know, we had the same terminology for everything, not, you know, foot troops infantry unmounted troop you know stuff like that you know just decide one term for the thing so that it's consistent we'll have to take a look though we'll have to take a look and see so they've changed the functionality of a lot of them for balance and clarity good good we'll have to look and see but in general you know that's always been a big complaint since they added a lot of the perks is that okay some of these just they don't really do that much you know we could probably be a little more giving with the perks. Let's see. Team Plus perks saw name change. Okay, well, we'll have to take a look. Trade Tree saw bigger changes recorded from perk effects. Make it so that the early game benefits perk. Blah, blah, blah. Let me, let me, let me try reading that again. Reordered some perk effects to make it so the early game benefiting perks can be unlocked or that doesn't roll off the tongue basically okay they've switched some perk effects around or possibly the perks themselves so that you get things that will benefit you early in the game earlier in the perk tree that's good that's another thing that's been brought up a lot is that there's some perks i don't know if it's necessarily in the trade tree but um in general like oh this perk would be really good if this was like the first or second perk when you get it at like 200 skill when you're halfway through the game it doesn't do it doesn't matter anymore but if it was the first perk that'd be very useful so we'll see we'll see that's good they're taking a look at stuff like that clan and party bug wander spawning okay but that's not the wanderer bug i'm having because i did dismiss some wanderers earlier in the game but the bug i would been having is just in general they don't move around the taverns or spawn in the taverns or something you just can't find them well you can it becomes very low chances of finding wanderers and it's very annoying because they exist in the game there's a pile of them but it, it's just they're just not accessible i don't think this fixes that though well, who knows who knows hmm Here's, okay, here is another big one. Alley mechanics have been redesigned and re-implemented. I say big, it's not, I already, okay. We'll, we'll read it and then I'll discuss my problem with it. From now on, players will be able to claim allies. I'm saying allies 
Well, you know what? Let's just start over. Let's start over. We're user, we're user video editor today. And, and get some scuff out of this video. Alley mechanics have been redesigned and re-implemented. From now on, players will be able to claim alleys after they clear one. They can do so by assigning a clan member who has suitable traits and roguery skills. Okay, so they need traits and roguery skills. So if you don't happen to have one spawn that has the traits and roguery spawns, shit out of luck. Because if you didn't know, there's not that many ways to make them get roguery right now since they will not sell their prisoners to the tavern. They just donate them all to the prison. And that used to be like the only way you could make your NPCs get roguery skill. Now I think what you could do is make them a party leader and give them bandit troops and then they would get some roguery skill after every battle they finish. That would do it. Possibly if they're in an army with you and you take a caravan. Teching caravans or forcing supplies or raiding from villages. I haven't tried that, so I don't know if that also gives them roguery skill, but that's it's possible. It would make sense if it did. All right, enough about how this might, suitable traits and roguery skills, that might completely fuck this over and make this irrelevant. Let's see. Player owned alleys will provide gold and bandit troops for the player, but also generate a crime rating. So, this part is interesting. Bandit troops for the player. That is interesting. Gold? Get fucked. You know, everything gives you gold. You get piles of gold defeating any party. That's the thing with like anything in the game where it's like, oh, you get a little bit of gold. Oh, well, so what? You get a pile of gold. I can go, go beat up any old party and get a pile of gold. So this part doesn't matter. This part might be interesting. Now, the counterweight to this is, will, will this ever be more useful than just force recruiting the troops that you want, including the noble troops? Probably not. I doubt that they're gonna give you so many bandit troops. The other problem is if you only have bandit troops, you're not going to get leadership, so you won't be able to turn them into noble troops. I don't know, but I guess it's, you know, you could just play with bandit troops if you wanted. It's interesting. This part is interesting. The other parts, I don't like. I don't care about getting a little bit of gold, and I don't want to give up wanderers to do this kind of stuff. It's just like caravans. It's like that's not... It's not really worth giving up a wanderer for that because it's just a little bit of money. This part is concerning too. Well, alleys will be attacked by neighboring gang leaders and the player will have to respond to those attacks in order to keep the alley. So we'll have to see. We'll just have to see how this is. Um, is it viable to be going around playing the game and also taking care of these? Or is this, you know, because if, if you can't... I don't, I mean, honestly, I'm going to just say it's not, it's not viable because unless they have some kind of teleporting or, you know, remote party control, you know, if, you, if you're required to stop what you're doing and waddle your butt back to this town to fight the gang leaders, that's not going to be worth it because there's always something more important for you to be doing than hanging around a town in, in this game. All right, enough about that. Oh, I was going to say, this is important. People wanted this. It's cool. I'm glad they added it. It doesn't add content to the game because you could already beat up gang leaders. So having an NPC sitting in a town giving you a little bit of gold, that isn't content. So yeah, this, this doesn't add content. It's probably not going to change the way you play the game. Um, we'll see though. We'll see about getting those bandit troops. Let's see. Armies fixed and exploit that allowed a player army leaders to leave the siege settlements without consequences by disbanding their army. Didn't know about that one. Ah, uh, I think if I'm in that situation, I just sally out and kill them. And that situation doesn't ever come up because if I see them in the field, I just kill them. Okay, renown and influence bonuses were rebalanced for multiple battle missions. Multiple battle missions 
means when the battle size and wave count for the battle is low and the battle size is higher than those, multiple missions are open for the battle. So, hopefully this fixes the problem where the game makes you fight a second battle against a much smaller force and you only get credit for defeating that smaller force. Hopefully it also causes the experience that your troops racked up during the first battle to not get deleted. That was an even bigger problem, like getting less renown and influence? That's annoying, but when you see like, oh, I have 30 troops ready to level up and then you do the, the subsequent battle and then there's nobody's gonna level up because you killed two guys, that, that fucked you over. That was a worse problem. So hopefully they fix that. It doesn't explicitly say that they fixed it, so we'll have to we'll have to see. Troop selection was added for keep battles. We had a troop selection. We'll have to see though. Maybe they changed it. The village raid system has been reworked. Instead of rewarding just the inventory and recruitment pool of the village, village raids now primarily rely on the amount hearth damage done to the village during the raid. Okay. So this is a bunch of tinkery stuff. We'll have to see. The only thing I care about is force recruiting troops. We'll have to see if we're getting more or less or the same amount of troops when we force recruit them. That's all I care about. This... Let's see. Recovery time for village has also increased. This could be good. This could help. This could help change the relentlessness of wars if these raided villages are taking longer to rebuild. However, the AI will just move to the next village and get free troops there. They don't care. So, I don't know. I like This is, this is tinkery stuff. Raids aren't good in Bannerlord. The end. Fixed an issue that allowed minor factions to join a kingdom that it should always be at war with. By descent. Okay. This is a long-standing bug where you will see, like, Embers of the Flame can become a mercenary for the Empire and all that kind of stuff. Their, their blood feud faction will eventually be allowed to be a merc for them and doesn't make any sense. It's not a huge deal, but I'm glad they fixed it. Ooh, okay, this one could be good. Wanderer life cycle was changed. Players can now find at least one of each wanderer type in the world at all times. We'll have to investigate exactly what they mean by each wanderer type, but, but if that means there's even more wanderers in the world, that's an improvement. That's an improvement that I care about because finding a good supply of wanderers to make use of your influence as a ruler and raise up new clans as often as possible, that is the, for me, that is the main strategy for the game. Just keep making those clans. So anything that might help me find more wanderers is an improvement. And also this this will help early on getting a few good wanderers if you need them to, to fill roles. Hopefully. We'll have to see. We'll have to see how good this is. But I'm excited for that. Let's see. Bunch of stuff relating to quests. This is Potatoes on Tuesday stuff. I'm glad they're looking into it. A lot of these changes are probably good, but I mean, we often finish an entire campaign without doing any quests. So, it's, you know, that's good. I'll, getting an extra potato on Tuesday is great. There's one more big thing here, but we actually have to scroll down here. They left this out of the actual patch note, but here we go. Order of Battle Lord Assignment. Players can now assign heroes to formation as regular troops. This allows players to create formations which only have heroes, bodyguard formations. Assign now, this probably doesn't mean that there's, there's probably not anything called a bodyguard formation in the game. That's just what they're, you know, what they're calling it. Let's see. Assignment system is also changed. Players can now drag and drop lords from formation slots to the hero assignment pool and vice versa. We also added a new low tier and high tier filters to the formations. That's really good. That is really good. 
because a lot of, I mean, so often I just want to sort my troops. I want the ones that don't need EXP and the ones that do need EXP. Or, you know, the ones that aren't going to die if something looks at them and the ones that absolutely are. And that's great. We'll have to check it out. Hopefully that helps us out with that. And this, very important. Otherwise, your heroes get knocked out every battle. It's just the way it is. It'd be great to, if you wanted to, say you pick someone up at the tavern, you haven't put gear on them, you're, you know. You just want them to stay safe. This will help out a lot with this. We'll have to see how it works, but this is a big old improvement. All right, I think that's it. I will go over this again, see if there's anything else I wanted to talk about. But... Hopefully this doesn't add too many new bugs, but we have no idea if it does or not. We'll have to mess around with it. See how it's going. All right. Have a good night. Thank you very much.